Hello everyone, I'm Muhammad Rajamiya, Managing Director of TCL Global. I hope you are well and safe. Welcome to Facebook Live. Um, I have a guest, uh, two guests, actually, Gates, International Marketing Manager from MENA Regions, and also Wills, International Marketing Manager for UK International. Thank you both of you for joining us today. Thank you so much, Muhammad. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So I want to start with uh, Gates, actually, about the, um, the COVID-19. And as you know, that uh, lots of students in the Middle East are asking, actually, about the September intake, what are the options? So what would be the, the advice from the university point of view that uh, about the applications and other things? Gates. So, so as of right now, we are still accepting applications. We are mm -hmm. still seeing applications coming and offers going out. Um, in terms of the university and the, and the start of the program, um we have as a university they have not yet decided so as of right now we are going ahead with september intake just dependent mm -hmm. on how long this situation develops and continues for um mm -hmm. however we are exploring the idea of alternative arrangements um so be it online starting the, the tuition online or deferring the, the the intake slightly none of it has been confirmed yet the university is kind of waiting until the situation develops further until mm -hmm. their final decision is made and before we announce that to our applica applicants and offer holders. Um, but rest assured, as soon as a, a decision is made, it will be communicated with everyone, including our partners. Mm. Um, it's just as of right now, because the situation is developing every day, there's new information. Yeah. Um, the university is almost holding out just a, just a bit longer um, mm. until that decision is made and, and like published to everyone, basically. Do you want to add anything, Will, here um, about that? Um, no, I think generally, uh, gay, uh, probably cover everything, really. Mm. Uh, we, universities are closely monitoring the situation. Mm. Uh, we, we don't know w what will happen, but I mean, look look at the um, uh, prime minister's uh, uh, announcement uh, last week. Yeah. Uh, we have, if we really have passed the peak, then uh, I'm pretty sure that September shouldn't be a problem if we're open open, uh, open in time. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, the prime minister is going to uh, address next week, uh, and some development we'll find in the coming weeks about the plan. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. uh, if we think about the in general the Middle East and the UK internationals, you know, so uh, uh, what actually found that already students, many students, are studying like a foundation or first year, you know. I think that sort of students, what I understood, call is speaking with the, the colleagues from the Middle East that they okay with the like a first semester online, you know, that because they are actually the continuous students already there, you know. So so that as you mentioned that there is a continuity plan for the first semester online. Yeah. Yeah. So there is a contingency plan in place, like I mentioned, um, just dependent on how long the situation develops mm. and, and continues for. The university is preparing. Mm. Um, we are getting th things in place to mm. uh, to start online if need be. Uh, but that's a contingency plan. That'd be on the side. Um, and hopefully everything goes well and we open yeah. up as soon as we can. Um, okay. That's that's the hope. Okay, sure. So thank you. Um, so if we actually start with the, the Brunel University, you know, Brunel University, uh, beautiful campus when I visited uh, last year there, you know, uh, meet with Sylvia. So it would be nice to know actually for the audience, actually the already lots of viewers already joined the overview of the Brunel University, yeah, the gate, please. Oh, yep, yeah. so Brunel University, London, we are a university based in West London. Mm. Uh, um, we're about 20 minutes away from Heathrow Airport and 40 mm. minutes away from central London. So as a location, it's mm. perfectly located between the, the hustle and bustle of the city and in the nice, the nice uh, British countryside. So students have the benefit of traveling to and from uh, both. So they're easily accessible to both. Um, in terms of a university, we're a one-campus university. We're the only one-campus university in London. We offer a wide variety of programs, both undergraduate, uh, masters, and uh, PhD level as well. These yeah. include foundation programs. Uh, we have a language center on campus, which is one of the best in the country. Mm -hmm. um, uh, international students can benefit from uh, on-campus accommodation for the duration of their studies. It's guaranteed. Mm -hmm. um, and for a very reasonable price. So our prices for accommodation start at £115 per week. Yeah. Um, they're very reasonable. And then in terms of facilities, you have everything on campus. So we have the award-winning uh, facilities for, for sports, for the academics. Um, everything is in-house and on campus. We even have a medical center, um, mm. banks, many restaurants and coffee shops. So everything is available there uh, for mm. students. In mm. terms of rankings, we're ranked uh, 332 in the world, uh, QS, and 42nd in the UK again, according to QS. Okay. Um, another thing is on our undergraduate programs, 95% of them offer work placements. So again, mm. students coming from abroad, 
are able to take advantage of these these um, placements that we have our undergraduate programs. So we're very very much not uh, very much work orientated, um, mm -hmm. and it's about preparing students for their future careers as well. Okay. So um, it would be nice to know from you the, why should they choose London, you know, um, as a the study destination. So from your point of view, for the students, what would be your um, suggestions? So it's a London experience. Um, yeah. So, and you won't get that any in any other city. So London mm -hmm. has been probably the best city to, to to study in for the last few years now. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's something I would highly recommend. I studied in London. However, I didn't get to benefit from a one campus university. Um, so the, the truly unique thing about Brunel is um, the, the location, mm -hmm. um, and secondly, the um, the the one campus accommodation. You won't find that at any university in London. Yeah. It's very close from the Heathrow, isn't it? Only 10 Correct. minutes. Correct. Yeah, so as I mentioned, yeah, 15 minutes away from Heathrow Airport. So very, yeah. very nearby. Yeah. Um, and it gives students, especially international students, it gives them the the almost feeling that they're not far from home. Uh, yeah. If they wanted to jump on a plane and head home, they're only 20 minutes away. Yeah, it's great, great. So it would be nice to start with um, with the foundation because lots of students from the Middle East, MENA, North Africa, you know, so we are receiving like with the foundations. Mm -hmm. I know that the Brown International um, College, you know, the, with the Navy Tals. Yeah. Um, so it would be nice to know about the foundation intakes, how many intakes they have, as well as the entry requirements a little bit. Yep. So um, LBIC, so as you mentioned, they're run by Navitas, so London Brunel International College. They um, they run our foundation program. So we have the mm -hmm. direct and we have the, the, the ones through Navitas. Yeah. Um, the the ones through Navitas students, as the majority of students in the, the Middle East would have done their Thanawea qualifications, mm. they would need to pass their Thanawea qualifications yeah. with a minimum of 65%. Um, mm. And they have a, a wide range, wide variety of, of programs available. So if students were interested in going on to anything in social sciences, mm. um, anything in business, economics, engineering, mm. uh, we will also have a medical school from September 2021, 20, the plan is. And again, they will be running our foundation. So students mm -hmm. with Thanawea grades are able to use that as, as a, a route onto their main degree program. Um, and then in terms of intakes, there are a few throughout the year. So we have one in September, of course, one in January. And then there's a very limited, smaller one in May. Okay. Um, so there are three intakes throughout the year. It's very mm -hmm. flexible. Students can join, like I said, three times a year. They have many opportunities to join the programs. And also um, that um, student can get the joint CAS. Correct. Years. Correct. Yeah. So that's one of the uh, one of the benefits, and a lot of students like that. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> that they're able to apply for the joint cast. Okay. Um, for the the IELTS, uh, as I know that um, there is a test in uh, there is a um, Brunel Language Center, I think. Yeah. That's for Correct. the English. So the student who doesn't have the required level of English, so what are the options they they have? So students, if they're based in the UK, they can come onto campus, well, not now, but I mean, in regular circumstances, they could have yeah. come onto campus um, every fortnight on a Friday, they okay. hold a, a uh, Brunel language test. It's called the Brunel test. Okay. If a student passes that exam mm -hmm. uh, or meets the, the required grade for a pre-sessional, they'll be able to mm -hmm. sit there and then join our, our program directly. Okay. Um, so more recently, due to the pandemic and what's going on now, mm -hmm. Uh, we have opened up online Brunelts. So okay. they will run for, fortnightly as well mm. or, um, on a Friday, uh, starting okay. from the 15th, I, I believe, of May. Mm. So again, it just gives students another opportunity to join the program. Mm. Um, I know English courses are in short demand at the moment, mm. um, short supply, sorry. Uh, students mm. want to take the program, but they're just not available. Mm. We've also opened up to other English exams, so Duolingo, um, mm. online okay. exam, as mm. well as pass, the password exam as well. So mm. we are accepting other pro other um um, other English exams. Okay, uh, IELTS indicator, are you accepting that? IELTS indicator, I don't think, have we had back, Will? I don't think it's been confirmed, has it? No, I think it is being discussed at the moment. I'm, okay. I'm pretty sure uh, we will soon confirm that. Yeah, I mean, we have already had a long list of English tests that we already accept, so I don't see why we won't consider another one. So, uh, okay. yeah, uh, keep, keep an eye on, on the development, on the update. So, uh, oh, well, we will keep you updated if we'll it's been confirmed. Exactly. So, we'll but, uh, sorry, Duolingo is confirmed, yeah? Duolingo? Duolingo, so, yes. Yeah. Again. So the Duolingo test, yeah, the Canadian based the test is okay, yeah? That one. Yeah, that, that's been accepted, yeah. So that's that's been confirmed. Uh, we oh. are able to accept students onto that the um programs with the um with the necessary grade, correct? 
Okay. Um, in uh, non, uh, there is also not only the internal test. If the student wants to study like an English course or academic course, what are the options they have at Brunel? So for the program, so we even offer, so online pre-sessionals have been um, announced recently, a couple of weeks ago. So all of our um, pre-sessional programs and intakes have been mm. transferred online. Um, okay. Students will be able to join that online, uh, live sessions every day. So so all the classes, they are not pre-recorded. Everything is live, okay. uh, there's a schedule in place. Um, additional support, um, uh, learning support will be uploaded online as well. Okay. Um, so students can benefit from all that. They won't be missing out anything from studying or, or starting online. Um, and then there's another option where it's half and half. So half online, and then the other half, as soon as campus opens up, students can come onto campus and we'll be issuing classes for them. Um, you know, I know that the, because of the COVID-19 and the, the lockdown, everything is online. But in normal circumstances, is there any um, English course, course, like a general English or academic uh, English um, on campus? Yes. Yes, yeah, so they are offered, they, they are both offered on campus. So okay. we have uh, in-sessional, pre-sessional, we have academic English. So they are all offered on campus. Okay, yeah. Especially Middle East students, as you know, that um, they need to come at least for three months or six months, maybe one year, you know, for the English. Then they progress for the their um, the progress degree, maybe bachelor yep. or master's. Okay, or mm. PhD. okay so fantastic. Um, so we discussed pretty much internal test, which actually is very <laughs> now the, for the students. And um, so if will, um, if you can tell me a little bit about um, the scholarship, please. Yeah. So what are the scholarship for the Middle Eastern or international students is available at the moment? Actually, um, we university have a, a wide range of scholarships offered mm -hmm. to our students. Mm -hmm. uh, I think one of the key, uh, key scholarships is international excellence scholarships. So okay. obviously not only for students from Middle East, but it, it's open for uh, all the in, uh, overseas students who pays overseas fees. Mm -hmm. So I think every year uh, for this September, we have uh, about 110, uh, mm -hmm. correct me if I'm wrong, uh, guys, uh, 110 um, awards are still available. Okay. Uh, well, uh, available, but uh, I think we have two phases of these to assess the scholarship. The first mm -hmm. phase, uh, unfortunately, has closed uh, last mm -hmm. week, okay. end, of, end of April, but yeah. it's still, uh, we're still open. And the second round will be around, I think the deadline around end of June, beginning of July. So, okay. um, students of June. Are, yes, 30th of June. So students are still uh, welcome to apply. And uh, um, yeah, um, it's o only open to offer holders. Okay. So if they haven't applied, so probably to apply first, and then once they have an offer, then it will be able to apply. So it's like a conditional is okay. It doesn't need to be unconditional, isn't it? Yes, as long as they are offer holders, doesn't matter okay. if it's conditional or unconditional, it'll be uh, available for them to apply. Um, is it support the certain level of students or the bachelor, PhD, masters or foundation or is all internationals? Yes, uh, I, I think it's open to overseas students for um, maybe for PhD. Well, I, I, I assume PhD uh, is not inclu included. So yeah, it's, it's not. Yeah. So it's bachelor's and master's students. Yeah. Okay, bachelor and master's. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And the um, award is six thousand pounds. So um, six thousand pounds for an undergraduate mm -hmm. student is per year for a mm -hmm. maximum of three years. So in total, they get eighteen thousand pounds off okay. for the uh, undergrad student. So it's a nice scholarship. It's really good, competitive. Mm -hmm. It's based on academic merit essentially. So the higher your grades, the more likely you are getting scholarship. Okay. Okay. Um, as you know, for the Middle East, lots of the students actually just are going to about to finish their foundation this um, this month. Actually, you know that we started the foundation last September. So if they want to apply for undergraduate, so it needs to be the through the UCAS or is it direct applications for them? So they have two options. Um, okay. If they're applying themselves, that mm. is through UCAS only. However, if they're going through one of a, rep a representative like yourselves, to yeah. TCL, yeah. then you are able to submit a direct application for them. And that'll be done directly to our website through our advisor zone. Um, okay. So it's a link that you, um, your, your team have. Um, yeah. And that's the only way they can apply directly, only through you guys. Okay. Um, it, like I said, if they were going, if they were applying themselves, it would have to be through UCAS. Whereas yeah. you guys have the flexibility to do to do either. The only condition is that they don't already have a UCAS application. Okay, okay. Mm. Um, another very common question that asked by our um, many students that okay, they study foundation. There is an English module in the foundation. Okay, and that module they did good score, like a sixty percent, sixty five percent. You know, in each band. 
So whether foundation student can use this score as an alternative of the IELTS for their undergraduate? It depends. So it depends on many factors. So it depends where the foundation was done, the program that was done itself, how yeah. long ago. Um, and then we have, so our English team, our, our language center have already made assessments on the majority of foundation programs in okay. and outside of the UK. Okay. Um, and in the case that they haven't, they can make a, a, an assessment based on the syllabus and, and whatnot. So they'll take a few diff different documents. They'll request a few different documents from you guys. And then an assessment will be made. Um, but we do accept some. Others mm. we don't accept, so it just depends on where it's been set. Okay, it's a which provider, like whether you exactly. do Captain or uh, the Debitas, you know. Exactly, exactly, yeah, exactly. So we accept some, others we don't. Okay, um, especially we found like a North African students, they they sometimes looks for like uh, the placement here, you know, the ask for the placement, you know, we found that Morocco, Algeria, and Egypt. So for undergraduate, is there any placement for industry students? Yes. So 95% of our programs at undergraduate level offer work, uh, offer the sandwich year, the placement year. Okay. Um, so that's offered on 95% of our programs. Hopefully yeah. in the coming years, it will be extended onto all of them. Um, mm -hmm. As of right now, it's 95%. So the vast, vast majority do offer as well at postgraduate level as well. So we do have some work placements that we offer on our programs as well. Mm -hmm. um, so there are a select few courses. There are uh, six in total that mm -hmm. offer the one year, one, one year placement program. So moving to the master's level, um, I know the majority of the UK universities, UK master's like a one year, you know? So uh, is there any courses that master's level that got the placements um, or any internship during the course or after the course? Uh, I, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. No, go for it. Yeah. yeah, basically, uh, um, I think most of our um, postgrad um, master degrees offer placement opportunity as well. Uh, okay. Placement range from four months uh, or twelve months, so students okay. still have an option to mm. do it. Uh, you know, with just a short term, right after mm. the, uh, graduate, or they can choose to do a full year uh, okay. placement after the twelve months study. So okay. uh, yeah, and also obviously this twelve months uh, placement is is, is uh, paid by the okay. employer, mm. uh, and also is because it's part of a study, student will be having the cash that cover this uh, both years. Okay, okay, I think it's great. I think, especially like a privately funded students, if we think about the, the from the Middle East or MENA, you know, North Africa, I mean, UK internationals, that um, the, there is a PSW, so that means they can have like a, during the study, about place study one year, then they can have a, like another two years post study work. So I think it's a good opportunity, good opportunity, and I think it's a good investment for their education as well. Absolutely. So, um, so these are the scholarships. Like, a, sorry, uh, the placement is the guaranteed, or is by the is based on their their academic achievement. I think uh, it, we 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 call hundred percent guaranteed. Mm -hmm. However, university mm -hmm. provide the full support to mm -hmm. the students who would like to take this route. So okay. during that study, uh, mm -hmm. they will be given plenty of advice and information from mm -hmm. our career uh, you know, colleagues. So they will mm -hmm. give, give the students the opportunity or when, or maybe even how to uh, how to attend the interview, how to mm -hmm. prepare for the interview, how to apply for their placement, etc. So uh, I mean, we, we have seen uh, yeah, a great number of students who have uh, chosen this route and managed to uh, get the placement, and in the end, you know, um, probably even uh, you know employed by by the uh, provider at the end. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, okay. So but it's uh, something that I'll add as well is. Sure, um, sure. So students have access to something called the Professional Development Center on campus. It's award-winning. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it's fifth best, best in the country. Uh, it's a really, really good um, support system that the students have uh, access to. And basically what they provide for students are mentoring, um, CV development, uh, interview mm -hmm. techniques as well. So they do offer, and then they obviously support students in applying um, for their, their positions as well. So it's something mm -hmm. I highly recommend for any student who joins Brunel to take advantage of. Okay, fantastic. Uh, moving to uh, PhD, as you know, that uh, lots of students have requested receive inquiries from the Middle East, you know, I mean, the fund, you know. Um, so, what would be the advice if they want to apply for the PhD students? Uh, because some universities, they have like existing uh, project group or they advise to connect with the supervisor or they want to throw the agents, you know. So, great, what would be advice for them, you know? So, there are two different ways of applying, yeah. okay? Mm. One is to submit the application as off the cusp and, and apply for the course. Yeah. Um, 
And then the other is to connect to the supervisors directly. And that's the one I would recommend. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd recommend students or yourselves mm -hmm. uh, connecting with supervisors, discussing the student's proposal, seeing if the interest is there to start with, mm -hmm. then amending the proposal accordingly, and then submit an, an official application. The problem mm -hmm. is when, uh, as, you, as you probably know, the mm -hmm. PhD application process can take a very long time. Yeah. Um, and it's difficult to secure a supervisor and then a second supervisor as well. So it's it's a very lengthy process. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, we've seen more success for students when we've recommended that they approach supervisors directly and then okay. they can give them recommendations mm -hmm. rather than applying and then kind of waiting yeah. for feedback, yeah. which can take weeks and months even. Yeah. So I would, I would definitely recommend them trying to connect with supervisors first. So okay. we have a database on our website, uh, okay. which includes all the professors and supervisors available at the university. Mm -hmm. Um, it's called Brunel People, um, and it's something that I would recommend students use. Um, the the contact numbers and email addresses for all the supervisors are available there, as well as their research areas yeah. um, and their interests as well. So that's that's the system I would highly recommend they use prior yeah. to submitting an application. And also, I've seen that um, some of the universities they have their like um, existing projects, you know, and some of the students already join, you know. So if they like, uh, there is a group of these students that they need, you know, to work on certain project, that could be one of the options in Brunel. Do you think there is a project? Yeah, so, yeah, so there are projects that are available, mm -hmm. um, and they are available through our website. So again, um, students can have access to them if there was an area that they were interested in studying and that happens to be on our website. Then of mm -hmm. course. Then yeah, then I would we would recommend they apply directly to that. Okay, thank you, viewers, just who joined us. So um, I have two guests here, Geth and Will. Um, so they are joining from the Brunel University. So as you know that uh, our office is based in Kuwait and Saudi Arabia, and I'm based in um, UK Portsmouth. So if you want to apply for the Brunel University, please contact our counselors, our offices, regional offices will be able to help you and our service is completely free of charge. Okay, we've got some questions actually here, Shahriar. Um, what are the courses you have in January intake? Yeah. January intake is, uh, so as of last year, well, as of the post, uh, sorry, pre-COVID-19, yeah. um, we have a total of eight um, postgraduate programs on there. Okay. They're all in the field of business. So okay. things like our human, our MSc management, mm -hmm. our accounting, um uh, human resources for example okay. and employee relations and our law program so there they are. it's very limited our january intake um okay. and then aside from that we have our foundation programs that begin in in, in january as well um undergraduate this is again i'm talking pre-covid 19 undergraduate yeah. programs there weren't any um, and then the remainder of the postgraduate courses there weren't any as well phds actually were very flexible that you could start mm -hmm. any any time of the year yeah 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 the pages so that means uh um do you think that because of the this situation uh, university may consider more courses in january so this is one of the um you could say contingency plans that the university is looking at so it's something they're considering uh, like i said they haven't decided they haven't made a, a final decision um we're just kind of weighing into the, how, how, to see how the situation develops and what happens in the coming weeks mm. before an announcement is made but it's something the university is definitely considering Okay, um, especially for the January intake, there is many students ask us okay, when the summer intake, when the like uh, the how the it works, you know. So so they will start in January, then finish in May. So they got the summer break, isn't it? Yeah, okay. I would assume so, but again, yeah. the um, uh, it hasn't been finalized yet, so it hasn't okay. been. Uh, so it's the same duration or the different duration? Who is starting January, January month? I think for uh, a master degree student, yeah. if they start from January, yeah. uh, the first semester, uh, as you said, probably fin uh, ends about May time, mm -hmm. and then they have summer break, and mm -hmm. then back from September they have their se second semester. Okay. So they was they, they start from uh, their final semester from January. So I think in total, for students mm -hmm. who start in January of master degree, it would mm -hmm. take fifteen months instead of okay. twelve. So okay. extra three months. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. Um, about the application process and um, the sometimes actually many students, as you know, Middle East, they want quick, quick offer, you know, <laughs> that's what they say, they apply, they said quick. Okay. So how will you say about the like a bachelor and master and PhD? PhD, we already discussed, it takes time, you know. So how long it can take if, if they want to apply for undergraduate and master's? So our team actually gave us an update, our admissions team. Um, this is last week. 
Yeah. And postgraduate offer, postgraduate offers were out in I think it was seventy two hours. So okay. they had a three day turnaround. Okay. Um, and uh, undergraduates was, if I'm not mistaken, one day longer. So one was three days, one was four days. They they try they issuing offers. Okay. But I mean, we could always get it out quicker. So if the students mm -hmm. applied via via TCL. And then mm. one of your counselors just sends me or Will an email saying I need an offer for this the student I need to be assessed. We can yeah. we can assess it the same day. So okay. um, yeah, so we can we can get the turnaround a lot quicker if needs be. Okay, okay. So is that the application is like a centralized application? There is a team that who is processing all this application rather than we don't need to the contact directly to the department to department, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. So it's it's a centralized uh, uh, admissions team. So you just apply via our website. It comes yeah. to our team. Our team are fully remote at the moment. So they're yeah. working fully from home. Mm. It has not affected processing times whatsoever. I think it, it, quite the opposite, actually. It's improved it. Mm -hmm. um, so our team are, are smashing, really. They're doing really well. They're sending out the offers, mm -hmm. the, the, the offers really quickly. And um, yeah, it's... Um, it, Okay. Can, can okay. you hear me? Okay. Yes. Fine. Um, about the the government sponsors, you know, the sponsorship. Lots of students actually they need to apply, you know, and they need the unconditional offer or letter, you know, that okay that the students has been accepted unconditionally. So that 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 letter the students can get if they actually meet academically all the requirements. Muhammad, are you referring to the Kuwaiti sponsored and the Saudi yeah, sponsored? Yeah. 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 Of course, of course. So, yeah. as soon as the as the student holds the conditional offer, mm. um, if they require a unconditional offer for sponsorship purposes, yeah. Yeah. we can issue that for them. That's not a problem. So we have that in the past that we can we can issue the PDF unconditional offer letter yeah. just for them to secure their scholarship. So that's that's something we we can do. That's not a problem. Okay. Um, also, uh, is because especially like uh, advanced mechanical engineer is very popular, you know, in the, in the Middle East, especially in Kuwait, you know, um, they need to apply for the ATAS certificate. So even if they don't have the ATAS certificate, so in that case, can they uh, get that letter for the sponsorship purpose? Get are you there? Hello. Hello. I think some technical issues. Um, you yeah. can hear me, William. Yes, I can hear you. Yes. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. yeah I think uh, yeah. guys may have some uh, issues. Yeah, yeah, you back. Yeah. Oh, it, back. Uh, so I just I was asking about the ATAS certificate. You know that for the especially advanced mechanical engineering. So um, if because it takes like, sometimes like four to six weeks. Okay. So yeah. while they are waiting for the ATAS certificate, they can can they um get that sort of that that letter for the sponsor purpose from the Brunel. say that again sorry the line was breaking i couldn't hear you uh, can you hear me now now i can yeah okay uh, i'm talking about the the ATAS certificate you know sometimes yep, it yeah, takes yeah. like four to six weeks to get it Correct. but they need to submit the uh, like a sponsor letter for the sponsor letter they need to submit the unconditional offer so without uh -huh. a certificate something that the university can consider or uh, what would be the advice for that yeah, so that's so we have in the past, we have in previous years, so we have a lot of uh, students applying from Kuwait, a lot of them for the mechanical engineering program that requires yeah. an ATAS certificate. Yeah, yeah. So it hasn't been a problem in the past. We are able to issue the un the unconditional offer letter for the purpose of them securing their scholarship. Yeah. Um, and obviously, we recommend that to the student and to the counselor as well that the, the offer is not actually unconditional, but it's just for yeah. the purpose of them applying for their scholarship and yeah. securing their scholarship as early as possible. So yeah, yeah. that's that's not a problem. Um, yeah. That's something we, we have done in the past and we will continue to do as well. Um, also, um, the deposit uh, for the cash, because what we have seen that many students apply for the scholarship because sometimes some delay and they want to pay for the deposit. And how much deposit they need to pay? And if they, after paying the deposit, if the students get their sponsorship, so what will happen? We'll get the refund, yeah? Get the refund. Yes, yeah. So the, the, for, the, the, for your first question, the deposit amount at Brunel is £3,000. That's okay. for our academic programs. The English mm -hmm. programs, the deposit is £1,000. Okay. Um, £3,000 deposit. Yeah, and if, if a student had paid, for example, and then applied for a scholarship and they later secured that scholarship, They'd be eligible for a full refund. That's that's uh, absolutely fine, and it has happened in the past again. So students had paid because they wanted to secure their place, pay the deposit, and then a couple of weeks later, maybe the the scholarship confirmation came through. As soon as they send us the financial, uh, the, the most important thing is the financial guarantee letter. As okay. long as it's it's sent to us, 
um, on headed paper from the organization sponsoring them, signed mm. and stamped uh, and dated, including the student's date of birth, mm. uh, full name and mm. ID number. So and, and the course as well, they, they are sponsored for. So that's not a problem. And that's not a problem. As long as the requirements are met for the financial guarantee, it's not a problem. Okay, we've got another question from the um, British graduates from the Northumbria University now are in their home country, can easily apply online. Yep, so they can submit applications online. That's not a problem as long as they have. Uh, so the main documents, depending on what they're applying for. So say, for example, they're applying for a postgraduate program, seeing as though they've graduated from Northumbria University. Yeah. Uh, postgraduate program, as long as they supply their um, transcripts and certificate, mm. a copy of their passport, yeah. um, and a personal statement. So that's all we require from students, really. If they're applying for an MBA, we need references as well, and they would conduct an interview with the student. However, mm. every other program at postgraduate level, that's all they would need. Um, right. Certificate and transcript, a personal statement, and passport copy. We got, uh, if already have a BDS degree, BSc honors, can we do masters without IELTS? Yes. So as long as they've graduated a maximum of three years ago, similar to the IELTS, basically. So um, if, if the undergraduate degree was completed three years ago or less, mm. then they can come directly onto the, um, the MSc program or MA program without the need of an IELTS or any other English um, qualification. Okay. Um, got a question from our colleague, Sakib. Um, has the Kuwait embassy given a, any green signal regarding accepting online places channels course? Not yet. I spoke to them on Monday. Not yet. So um, the Saudis have, for example, the Saudis yeah. have come back to us and said that we can accept online precessionals. Um, this is for students who'd already enrolled or who, who are already oh. in the UK, um, okay. as long as certain requirements were met on the offer letter. Mm. Um, but the Kuwaitis, I spoke to them, mm. like I said, on Monday, only last week, um, mm. and they haven't confirmed anything yet. They said they were more concerned about evacuating the students at the moment. Um, back to their repatriate, repatriating them back to Kuwait before they, mm -hmm. they made a final decision. So they hadn't got back to us, in all honesty. Um, what are the facilities you have for accommodation campus and the questions? So as I mentioned, accommodation yeah. is, is um, guaranteed for all international students to start with, and that's mm -hmm. for the duration of their studies. So if they're with us for, for a year or three years even, it's guaranteed for them. Mm -hmm. In terms of rooms, we have over four and a half thousand rooms on campus. So this is all on campus accommodation, all mm -hmm. within a maximum of, let's say, 10 minutes from any kind of destination within campus. Mm -hmm. um, we have a few different kind of um, categories. So we have the room, which is the basic room with a shared bathroom. Mm -hmm. um, we then have the ensuite. So you have the student would have their own um, uh, bedroom. They have their mm -hmm. own bathroom and then shared kitchen facilities. And mm -hmm. then we also have sh studio flats. Okay. Um, so we have studio flats available on campus as well. They're a bit more pricey, but I mean, the availability is there. Mm -hmm. And then if students were interested in off-campus accommodation, again, we have, I think, over 70 or 80 properties uh, oh, within, yeah. two, within two miles of the university. So with all walking distance, mm -hmm. um, if students didn't want to live necessarily on campus. Mm -hmm. um, so there are options available. And then on campus, we have, although it's not catered, we mm -hmm. have food, we have restaurants, mm -hmm. we have coffee shops. Everything is available around students and, and um around their accommodation. So, like I said, it's it's very much like a self-sufficient um, place for students to study. Everything is there for them. Okay. Okay, viewers actually who are watching us from the Kuwait, please contact our Kuwaiti office. Um, our team will be able to help you. And also, um, from the Saudi Arabia, our Riyadh office, you can contact them. They will help you. And also, they can arrange for your test. Uh, they can advise you on alternative test. Uh, which are available for you for September intake, as well also uh, as well um, the, um, the, um, the students watching from Bangladesh um, that uh, you can contact our team in Dhaka and select, and our team will be able to help you. And uh, my team based in Portsmouth, UK, and our team will be able to help you. Um, so, okay, we got another question. Will the September intake semester start as per schedule? Our online classes will happen for the first term, and also give is there any plan for delaying the starting date? Here. Potentially, yeah. So as we mentioned, um, there's a potential of that happening. We're just waiting to see developments here in the UK. Mm. Um, hopefully in the coming weeks and then accordingly, we'd we'll be able to announce um, the university's decision. But there, everything is being discussed, be it um, delayed start, um, mm. online, online start. Um, mm. But as of right now, we are hopefully planning to go ahead with the September intake. 
But like I said, this could all change, um, and the university is planning. Uh, this is the, the contingency plan is in place, um, and they are considering other um, methods, so starting online or potentially January. But I, like I said, nothing has been decided officially as of yet. Okay. Um, will um, anything from your uh, side want to add finally? Uh, so we're just to end part of our session. Yeah. Sure. Uh, I think uh, guys will probably uh, cover most of the things. Uh, and there's one more thing. Uh, we maybe uh, that we have a coronavirus portal on the universe website. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. for uh, basically everybody. So no matter you are a current student or you, if you are a prospective student, if you are parents of pr prospective students, uh, you can find all the answers, uh, all the, you know, to to possible questions you have. So it's a Q and A, a long list of that. So. Uh, I, uh, I advise that if you have any questions, that's the place to go to for your answers. Mm, okay. okay. Yeah, thank you. Um, yet, final few words from you before we wrap up. Yeah. Um, I would like to thank everyone, to be honest. I think we covered everything pretty much. Yes, um, yes. I would just like to thank you so much, Mohammed, um, for the opportunity to speak to your students directly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I hope the session was informative. Yeah. Um, I had plans to show a presentation, but I couldn't, due to technical difficulties, I couldn't get it to work, but it's not a problem. Hopefully, we covered everything. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so if anyone has any questions, speak to their counselors directly, and then again, they can speak to us, um, and we'll be able to support wherever we, we, we can. Okay, thank you, thank you. And also, just I want to add here that we have a plan for the Bachelor Fair as well in coming months, you know, after uh, eight festival. Um, and also this session, we're going to send uh, each and every students who already applied to Brunel or interest so that they can actually have the whole scenario. Um, so it will be nice as you uh, Brunel on board, you know, when we do the virtual fair from the Middle East, you know, for the MENA, you know. So sure, that's students who will have um, the more uh, like a one to one session, you know, that have a more specific questions, you know. So thank you viewers actually for joining us today. It was really great sessions and uh, uh, we try our best, you know, as much information that to give you. And if you are still not clear or you want to know any certain information, please, please contact our Kuwait office, contact our Saudi office and myself based in UK. You can see there is my number is there. You can find out details, each of his details in our website and social media website. And please, uh, if you find this one, a useful decision please share with your colleagues and with your friends and family and i wish you stay safe and i understand it's a very difficult time for everyone and hopefully um we'll overcome this crisis and we'll have everything normal very soon thank you finally finally gate and we'll thank you very much you know for thank joining you us so much, thank, thank you so much thank you thank you thank you thank you take care bye